Everyone, please open a tab with the link that I just sent out to your Slack. So we're going to talk today about making games. Since this is the Game Dev Week, I get to do the super fun thing and have you all make your own games. This is going to be a very simple, weirdly short lecture for something as complex as games, but the truth is, is that games are supposed to be fun. They're supposed to be awesome and they're supposed to be easy for you to create, to become part of, to, to live in the world that you make. There are <clears throat> two main elements to any game and we can get into the complexity of what does and doesn't consist of a game later on. For now, just assume with me that there are two pieces of a game, whether that be a tabletop game or a video game, and that is the story and the mechanics. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So the reason that I sent this link out, and this is one of my super fun links right here, it's uh, random.org's coin flipper, and I'm making you all flip a bronze Cistercius from the Roman Empire, because it's fun and it's more cool than flipping a penny. Uh, so this is a coin flip, and we're going to use this for everybody in here, in your teams, to design and create a game today. There is a simple form for storytelling, and if you watch movies, you'll notice this form happen again and again and again. The simple form for any story is, and it's, a, it's called the seven line story, once upon a time, and every day, until one day, and because of that, and because of that, until finally, and ever since then, okay? Those are, the, those are the seven lines to creating any story. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived next to the woods. And every day she wore a red cape and she went and visited her grandmother. Until one day it was really dark and stormy outside and there was, there was tales of a wolf, but she went anyway. And because of that, she met the wolf in the forest and she was tricked by him. And because of that, the wolf went ahead of her and got to her grandma's house and ate her grandma all up and laid in wait for her. Until finally, Little Red Riding Hood appeared at her grandma's house and was swallowed up by the wolf. And then cut him open from the inside and let her and her grandma out. And ever since that day, she's always been really, really careful of wolves in the forest. That is a very simple story. What you're going to do when you create your own stories today is you're going to tell that story that simply. And it could be something as simple as, once upon a time, there was a computer science student at Seattle Central College. I would highly advocate you doing something more along the lines of, once upon a time, there was a android named Joe who worked in a nuclear power plant on Ursa 4 in the Nebula Galaxy. And it's partially so that you get the sense that you're telling a story. But it's okay to put yourself in it too. Honestly, there's not a whole lot in there was a kid and she did her homework and basically didn't get into trouble and then one day she got a good job. <laughs> right? So that the reason we tell stories sometimes is to speculate on interesting things that could happen to us. So what I'd like you all to do is, as you have your notes and your computers in front of you, you're all going to write the story of once upon a time and every day until one day and because of that and because of that until finally. And here is where we add the mechanic in. Until finally is going to be something that happens randomly and you're going to use the coin flipper here to decide which one it's going to be. Okay? Maybe in when you use your, your coin flipper here, you find out that actually the wolf digested Little Red Riding Hood and the town sheriff came by and arrested the wolf, but it was too late and then they hung the wolf in the town square and then the wolf's hide was hung up over the pub and every day since then, every single person who ever went to the pub heard the story of how there were wolves in the wood and they've never gone back there again. And that might be something that randomly happens at the until finally moment, that climax of the story moment that is the mechanic you use in terms of randomization. Does that make sense? Okay. What questions do you have about designing a game with both story and a mechanic? This is as simple as it can possibly get when it comes to creating a story. So what I'd like you all to do before we, we get into teams and we do that is recognize the story and the mechanic are those two parts, but there's also something really interesting about games that don't happen elsewhere. In stories, we are often passive participants in figuring out what's going to happen in a story, right? We're, we're passive participants. We listen. We watch The Little Mermaid. 
we watch a Quentin Tarantino movie, who, by the way, is mostly interesting to filmmakers because he takes that seven-line story and mixes it up. The first scene in Pulp Fiction is, until finally, right? And something like the very last scene is, once upon a time. That's one of the reasons why he's interesting to filmmakers and why he's interesting to watch, although it can get a little confusing. Why even the most complex narrative films like Inception or Memento still end up following those narrative lines. And yet, you just sort of watch. You're not really participant in it. Some of the most amazing experiences of my life as a gamer have been when I felt like I was able to participate in the story. And two really good examples come from Dungeons and & Dragons and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. How many of you have all played Dungeons & Dragons? Raise your hands if you played Dungeons & Dragons. Awesome. How about any tabletop role-playing game whatsoever? Very awesome, beautiful. The reason that we do this, not just because it's cheap, I mean, unless you know, you've ever actually played it and you've had to buy every single different kind of dice imaginable, and it's fun to do with your friends, is because we like to feel like we're participating in the storytelling activity, right? And some of the moments that I've had in Dungeons and Dragons about being creative have become so vivid that I can imagine entire different worlds in my head. And some of the moments that I've had in video gaming have been so, um, they've, they've struck me very deeply because it was something so unexpected or so amazing about the narrative. How many of you have ever played the game, not the new one, the, the MMO, but the older game from like 2002, Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic? Okay, so I think everyone in here who has played, so it's, it's 12 years old at this point. If you don't know that the cake is a lie, I'm going to spoil the game for you anyway. There is a huge turn at the end of the game where you find out that you were the bad guy all along, and you are blown away absolutely blown away in that moment. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually very emotional to be part of that story that was so wonderfully told. I think it's the best video game of all time. That was so wonderfully told that you feel the emotional impact of having gone on this journey, not with these characters, but as these characters. And I think that is what the magic of gaming is. And that's why people will do things like <laughs> deal with the crazy ass hours for working at a AAA studio to put out a giant game like Destiny or whatever, right? So. I'm going to have you all work in your teams in a, as, in a moment, but just remember that the three parts of, the game, of, of gaming and creating games, and I want you to do this so that you get a feel for what it's like, is that story is very important. The mechanic that lets you figure out what's going to happen next, because you don't just want it to be a linear story all the way through, otherwise it's not a game, it's not you participating, is going to be very important. The simplest possible mechanic is the flip of a coin, a bronze cistercius, a penny. We change the kinds of randomization that exist to get more complex in something like Dungeons and Dragons and use six or seven different kinds of dice. How many of you have seen a 20-sided die before? Awesome, killer, beautiful. So you've, you've heard of rolling 20s, you've heard of rolling polyhedra, multiple different kinds of dice to give j different kinds of odds on actions, right? That's the mechanic that exists in that and many other tabletop games. And in something like Unreal, when I talked to you yesterday about the Unreal Engine, we're talking about that system of odds on steroids. Steroids on steroids. The level of complexity is huge. The, the physics and the interaction is amazing. But at its heart, it's still just a story, and you're flipping a coin in it. All right? People love experiencing games because they participate and they create those worlds in their head. Gaming is wonderful. It's a wonderful way to be, um, to be with your friends, to create new narratives in your head, and I am really looking forward to having you do this. How many of you have ever made a game before? Wow, really, just a couple of you. So this is, is this a first, how many of you in here for, for whom this is gonna be the first time you've ever made a game, ever? Hot, damn, awesome. All right, well, let's get started then. Uh, get in your teams and pull up a notepad and start sketching out a simple story.